Hey everyone, Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com and welcome to another portion of the OHT Sunday Motivational Video. Each week, I'll try to bring you a topic that you maybe haven't thought about, experienced, or are going through right now and are searching for answers on how to overcome what seems to be a life or death situation. This uncomfortable hockey experience can last for a couple of games, weeks, or even a month and is filled with negativity, anxiety, self-doubt, and a feeling of being defeated. There isn't a player or team out there that can outskate this disruptive force that can appear out of nowhere when you least expect it. What am I talking about? Yeah, what the heck are you even talking about? I'm pressed for time. Will you get on with it? Okay, okay. Today I'm going to be talking about, I hate to even say the word, it's like saying shut out in the last minute of a game when you're hanging on to a one nothing lead. But alright, here we go, and don't get mad at me, because I'm going to be talking about the hated, something we try to avoid at all costs, the dreaded slump. More specifically, scoring slumps. Ah! I just cringe thinking about it. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and turn on that notifications button or you'll be missing out. Let's face it, there's no nice way to describe a slump other than it sucks. Yeah, they do. There's not a shot you can get from a doctor that will make you immune from this unfortunate situation from a team and or individual perspective. That's the bad news. The good news is that thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of athletes from all sports spanning the globe have been experiencing slumps forever. I bet you right now there's someone out there going through the old slumpster experience as we speak. Am I right? Of course I am. Because regardless of level of play, there's a team out there struggling to get a win, can't score on the power play, or individually, you're having a tough time tickling the twine, which hasn't happened, which seems to feel like an eternity ago. Though I wasn't a big point producer after high school, I had a little scoring dry spell one year as I went my entire freshman season at the University of Minnesota without scoring a goal. That was a long stretch. Scoring goals really didn't matter much to me, as I'd like to focus on another aspect aspect of the game. But for some of you mega point producers out there, this slump stuff really gets in your head and messes you up. So what is a scoring slump anyways? Dictionary.com defines slump as a period of decline or deterioration. Sounds like a sucky time. Yes it is. And what I'd like to provide you in this video is how or why scoring slumps happen, what to expect when one shows up, and the absolute best strategies to get out of it as quickly as possible. So let's get started. Like I mentioned earlier, a scoring slump will appear out of nowhere when you least expect it. It's weird when it happens because it's like the player's point production valve just shuts off. For these athletes, they've proved year after year, level after level, that they are one of the top participants in their sport and expect to produce every single game or match. This is all they've known, how to lead teams and leagues, and they love the pressure that goes along with having the game on their shoulders the last minute needing a tally. But that pressure comes in two forms that are at completely opposite ends of the feeling spectrum and is 100% based on if you're in a slump or not. When things are going really well for you, the game is fun, the pressure is light, and you try to tap into it as much as possible. The more pressure there is, the more more confident you feel. But when you're in a slump, that pressure becomes very heavy, attaches itself to you, weighs you down, and pulls you deeper and deeper in a negative pool of thoughts. Sounding familiar? Which opens up the floodgates here to where you're now questioning everything, and I mean everything. You feel powerless during this early phase of a slump and have words constantly circling around that cause anxiety, self-doubt, lack of confidence, and despair. It's as real as it gets. You feel like you're lost out at sea, getting pulled further and further away from your end destination. What can you do? If I've seen one of you mega point producers go through a slump, I've seen a thousand of you, and you're all the same. When you're going through a slump, all of you, and I mean all of you, you get stupid. <laughs> what did you just say? Yeah, they get stupid. All of us 5th, 6th, or 7th defensemen, or 3rd or 4th line forwards know the success of a team is determined by your top performers and if you're happy or not. And the only thing that brings you guys and gals happiness is when you're producing points. But every time you go through a slump, you get stupid and forget that you've dominated every level you've played, you've put the work in, and the most important factor, you forget that slumps are temporary. In the research I conducted online, I couldn't find anything out there on why slumps happen in sports. 
So if you now know that a slump is completely out of your control, what can you expect to happen during this time? Number one, beat yourself up. You think I'm kidding? Well, I'm not. Because when the elite slip into the slumperama, they mentally beat the crap out of themselves, not physically, but in between the ears, bouncing one non-productive thought around in their melon after another. Why they do that? It's been suggested that top performers link producing points to their identity, and when they don't execute on any given performance, they think they've let the team down, feel that their coaches don't like them anymore, and that their teammates think they suck. Am I in the ballpark here, people? Listen, the only person that isn't like Liking you or thinks that you suck is you. Your coaches and parents all want you to succeed and play to the best of your ability as they wish for every member on the team. As far as your teammates, do you think that they aren't affected by a bad outing like you are? They are. So get out of your head that any of your teammates are thinking about if you got a point or not after a game because they're not. They all have enough to think about regarding their own game. If you want to have a chance to get out of a slump faster, stop beating the crap out of yourself with all that negative self-talk. It doesn't help and actually slows down the process of exiting this challenging period of time. Next, for some sports like golf for instance, when a player isn't scoring well, it usually usually means that something's out of whack and needs some attention. This requires spending some time on the range, making any corrections to their drive, short game, approach shots, or putting technique to name a few. In all the years I've been around the sport of hockey, never once has a player going through a slump had some type of passing or shooting mechanical issue. They just can't score for a while. Well that doesn't help much. No it doesn't, but here are some things that you can focus on during this learning opportunity. And that's what it is a pinnacle moment for a little personal growth. These are the times that separate the average from the great. The great get up the next day, try to start quieting their mind of all the negativity, and start focusing on what's in their control. And that's the process they've been executing for years. Nothing's broken, you've just fallen off the wave and haven't figured out how to get back on yet. Start small and simple and focus only on the things that are in your control. And that begins with your attitude and effort. Come to the rink ready to learn and work your tail off so you don't become a distraction to the team. See if you can get on the ice early or stay on for a bit after practices to work on a few shooting drills that you've done in the past. Add some new ones to the mix for a change of pace. There aren't any set steps or rules every player can follow to get out of a slump. You just have to keep tinkering with your process until you finally crack the seal and get out of it. For a lot of you high performers out there experiencing the slumperama, you forget that there's a lot more to the game of hockey besides scoring, which is your primary focus each outing. During this time, it's been suggested to dedicate more attention to other aspects of your game, like maybe playing a little more defense than you normally do. I remember on a few occasions, back when Coach was playing in the NHL, there was a lot of adult beverages ago. Yeah, it was. But for these superstars that were deep in a slump, all of a sudden turned into a defensive specialist for about 30 seconds. I believe, for this brief moment in time, the player is so mad that they can't score, that they decide that if they can't score, then they're going to do whatever it takes to not let anyone else on the ice score. So what did they do? They throw themselves in front of a defenseman who's unleashing a cannon, which is quickly absorbed by this frustrated individual who blocks the shot, is sprung on a breakaway, which they quickly convert into a Geno, and just like that, another slump is over. Go figure! I don't want to make this any more complicated because it's really not. Your game isn't broken. What's happened is that you aren't getting the results you want. You self-sabotage yourself during this time, getting yourself to believe something you've manufactured in your head that you're not able to score anymore. You'll put all kinds of extra effort and time trying to get out of a slump like changing up what your pregame meal is or the order you put on your equipment. None of this matters. You know how to play the game. You know how to score. It's there. You just have to find it again. If you really want to know if you're in real danger of not ever being able to score again, you just have to ask yourself one simple question. Are you creating and getting scoring chances? Well, what's your answer? It's yes, isn't it? It's only when the answer to that question is no is when you have to start worrying. As long as you're creating and generating scoring opportunities, you'll eventually pot one. So what did we learn here today? We learned that there's nothing we can do in order to prevent a slump, they just happen. We learned that there's a lot of negativity, increased pressure, and heightened anxiety when experiencing the old slumpster. We also learned that these upper end players get stupid when going through a slump. 
forgetting that they've had success at every level they've played, have put in the work, and most importantly, forget that slumps are temporary. Lastly, we learn that there's nothing mechanical that needs to be fixed when going through a hockey scoring slump. You just have to ask yourself one question, and that's if you're still getting scoring chances. If you are, then you got nothing to worry about. Just keep putting yourself into good scoring spots, making smart hockey plays, and most importantly, keep shooting, as you'll eventually find your way onto the score sheet. It's that simple. Well, that's a wrap for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please throw me a like and share it with someone in your hockey circle. Coach would appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Remember to dream big, bigger than everyone else, and if you're going through a scoring slump, just keep shooting. I'll see you next time.